Hello, welcome to a new exciting Creature 3D tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to go through the new motion capture retargeting feature of Creature 3D. This very, very powerful feature allows you to import an existing BVH motion capture animation asset and then essentially retarget the animation onto your existing Creature 3D, 3D character rig. You can see how powerful this feature is going to be. And so without further ado, let's jump into motion capture retargeting or mocap retargeting. Now, before we begin, I'd like to say that in order to help you go through the motion retargeting process a bit easier, I've added a bunch of new features into the rigging process itself. In rig mode, as I am right now, this is my character mesh. If I go into rig, you can see I can click on import rig, and that gives me a whole host of options. Now, there's obviously the standard options I can import in a human, quadruped, a flyer rig, or a custom rig. But more importantly, right now, I've also added a new option called import mocap rig. You click on it, and this allows you to basically select an existing BVH animation asset as a rig to actually use as part of your character rig. So if I double click on it, you can see that, here we go, this is the BVH rig, as you can tell, and all I need to do now is I can just align it, I can just move it or align it to my character, right? If I align the rig to my character, I can basically use the existing BVH rig as my character rig. I can obviously size this down, like so, so I can fit it to my character, and there you go. So with a bit more, few more adjustments, I basically have my character rig. Now, I'm not going to go through, the next steps obviously are to skin weight this, this mesh with this new character rig, but I'm not going to go through this process. This has been covered in the previous Creature 3D tutorials on the channel, so I will encourage you to go in and learn how to actually skin weight this character rig with your character mesh to make sure that all the vertices are posed correctly with your bone transformations. But essentially you've seen how easy it is. It's literally a one-click process from rig, import rig, select my BVH animation asset, and then I can import and use the same rig from the animation asset. Now, if you want to use your own rig, it's fine as well. The motion capture retargeting tool allows you to also target your own custom rig. But again, it's much easier if you would use the existing rig because the animations probably map a bit uh, more more efficiently across the, the entire workflow. So without further ado, let's go into motion capture retargeting in the animation phase. Okay, so here is our character rig weighed properly with the BVH animation asset rig. As you can see, if I go into the test mode, I can try out a couple of manipulations of the bones. I can see it actually deforms the legs correctly, you know, just as a test to show you how it all works. Now again, please go through the Creature 3D rigging tutorials on how to skin weight your mesh with your bone transformations to find out more how to do it. I'm assuming you already know how to do it, but I'm just showing you that we have the character properly skin weighted, so now we can go into animation mode. In animation mode, what we do now is we want to import in an existing mocap animation. Here is our character as rigged properly in rigging mode, so we assume you already have done that. Now the first thing we do is click on file and then click on import mocap animation. Again, you pick the animation you want. I'm going to pick the second one. I think this is a walk cycle animation. There you go. This is a simple walk cycle. Now, if I were to actually just play, you can see this guy is already moving, right? That's kind of cool. So that is your imported motion capture animation. And it shows up as an object called mocap in the scene objects browser. Very convenient. That's pretty cool. Okay, now before we begin to even do any kind of motion capture retargeting, we have to actually configure this, this whole mocap character for, for retargeting animation. Now, as you can see right now, it's actually walking across the screen because that's, a, that's what the original motion capture data was. However, I might not want that. I might want the character to actually, actually walk in place, right? Because I want to make an actual walk cycle animation for the character. I don't want it to translate across the screen. So how do you do that? Now, Creature 3D is extremely powerful because it gives you a lot of options to, to tweak these settings. Now, on, when, when I select the mocap object on the scene browser, you can see there's a whole bunch of properties I can tweak, and I'm going to go through some of them, so you might find them useful. Now, first off, you can obviously change the asset, so I can change the animation. I can import in a different asset. Start and end are basically the start and end uh, animation frame ranges. So that's the start and end animation frame range of the mocap asset itself. 
not of your animation time frame. So you can actually have a different start and end frame and it will actually map or stretch or retime it based on your animation. So that's kind of cool. So you can actually do slow motion animation and it will scale it accordingly. Now I'm going to go through auto scale and auto align later, but for now what I want to do is I want to show you how I can tweak the mocap animation to suit my requirements. One of the requirements right now is I actually want the character to walk in place. This is not walking in place. This is actually moving across the screen. So what I do is I can go into the root joint of the mocap animation and the root joint right now has a bunch of properties. It's got move scale, rotate scale, and angle offset. If I change the move scale to zero, let's see what happens. All to zero. All right, let's play the animation. Oh wow, look at this. It's actually walking in place. So what is it actually doing? Well, what it's doing is basically it's setting a scale factor, animation scale factor for each of the joints, animation joints you care about over here. So I can actually change how far each joint moves or translates, how far each joint rotates. I can amplify or reduce the motion and I can even offset the motion by in degrees, Euler angles essentially. So this is a very powerful feature. Now I can obviously restore the X, the Y, and Z. Okay, sorry. Maybe I want to restore the X and I want to maybe get rid of the Z. Maybe let's see what happens. There you go. So if I, if I get rid of the, of the Z component, what actually happens is I actually still get the bounce the bounce motion, up and down gate bounce motion of the character. So it's a bit more realistic, but the character still walks in place. So that's kind of cool. So essentially what each, jo each joint of the source animation allows you to do, the parameters allows you to do, is you can actually tweak or amplify or reduce the amount of translational motion. You can amplify or reduce the amount of rotational motion, and you can also offset each angle of the source animation. So this is a lot of power. You can actually augment or modify or tweak how you want the source animation to map to your target animation, right? So that's the first thing that's, that you need to do. The second thing you need to do is actually map the source, source animation joints, like hips, onto my target animation joints, right? So I can map it to, say, the hips. So you, you have to do this for, you don't have to do this for every single joint. It's not completely up to you. If you want to map only a couple of joints, a subset of the joints, you can do that. Or you can, you can actually, say, map all the joints. That's up to you. Right. Now, if you don't know, for example, which joint is mapping to which, let's pick an example, like right leg. Let's say I map, map it to the right leg of my, my rig, right? Right leg, or let's see if I can, there you go, right leg. If I don't know where it is, I can click on this eye icon, and you can see, you see this? You can see when I have the eye icon, this shows up. So this actually shows me, let me show you again. You see this red box? This shows me exactly who I'm targeting. So right leg is targeting the right leg. Okay, so that's kind of cool and I think very useful. What I want to do now is I can actually move the character rig a bit closer so you can actually see them aligning, right? So you can see when I click on, again, let me click on the eye icon, you can see those two guys align to each other. So that's good, they map to each other. Now, doing this manually is a bit tedious. As I said, if you actually name your character rigs, rig bones or joints exactly the same as the source BVH animation assets rig, bo uh, rig bones, then what you can do is you just move your mouse over here, auto bind by names. If I click on it, you notice every single bone is automatically mapped. So that saves you a lot of time. I think it's a very useful feature. I encourage you to use it as long as your character rig bones are named in the same way as the source BVH animations, rig bones. So if they're the same, you can do this auto mapping, saves you a lot of time. If not, just go in and then manually set and assign them, right? Okay, so now we have both of these guys, you know, mapped correctly. You can see, see when I actually come in here, see I'm inspecting them. When I click on the eye icon, I, I can actually change what I'm targeting. So here, this guy maps it here. So now it's all uh, perfectly targeted. The next thing we want to do is we have to, want to, we have to align and scale the character to the, be the same as the character rig. So essentially, the BVH animation rig needs to be of the same size as the size of the character rig. There's multiple ways to do this. Obviously, I can use the manip controls, right? And I can scale my character. Okay, that's kind of cool. But also, more, in a more powerful way, I can also come here and just say auto scale, and that should fit my character in the same size as that. So 
being of the same scale is important. So in order for the animation to map correctly. And the next thing we need to do is we have to align the character rig with the original character rig or your target character rig uh, for the animation to work. In other words, the BVH character rig has to be aligned to your character's own character rig. They have to be just in the same, they have to be aligned essentially. You can either do auto align, which will help you automatically align, or you can just sort of drag them to, for, with more finesse, right? So either way works, but essentially you need to align the two character rigs together so that the animation retargeting can do its magic, can do its job. All right, so maybe that could work. All right, so once they are sort of aligned, you can start motion capture retargeting. And how do you do this? Move your mouse over. There's a rocket icon on every single bone. Doesn't matter which bone you press. Just click on it. It will ask you for a resolution. I recommend 100. So click OK. And let's see what we get. Oh, cool, look at this. So now we already have a retargeted animation. I think that's pretty cool, right? This is your character running the retargeted motion capture animation of the of the BVH uh, asset. So I think that's that's already a very very cool, very interesting first step. It saves you a lot of time to get any kind of uh, animation up and running. Right. So now before we continue, let's actually inspect to see what we have. After you've done the motion capture retargeting, it creates a whole bunch of bone motors for you. What kind of bone motors does it create? Let's take a look. Let's actually take a look. So if we inspect this guy over here, like the right forearm, you will see it's created a special motor. It's called a quad K motor. What is that? So let's click on that. So this is a very special motor. It's not a an FK motor, not FK motor. It's a quaternion direct manipulation motor. The reason why we're doing quaternions is because the animation from the BVH retargeting is quite kind of complex and oftentimes in order to map the animations properly to ensure proper rotations quaternions are the key to getting proper results now you're probably saying I don't un understand how I can manipulate these quaternion values because yeah they're a bunch of complex numbers it's not intuitive don't worry about this because there's a much easier way you can actually directly set for example let me just show you you can directly set the pitch yaw and roll with these controls. That's what I've given you. So I can actually change the angles. Let's say 60. Let's see what happens. You can see it rotates up, right? I can restore it back. So essentially, you can keyframe all your angles here by just entering values. See that? So it's a very easy way of doing keyframe animation without actually having to understand what quaternions actually are. You can directly just put in your pitch yaw and roll angles and you can keyframe it. Of course, the other way to do it is you can click on convert FK and it will actually convert the, the, the motor back to an FK direct motor where you can just directly manipulate it with your standard FK controls. That works as well. As well. Although a word of caution, which is if you convert it back to FK, sometimes the combination of angles are too complicated, the animation is too complicated, your FK conversion might not be able to replicate fully the motion of the quad K motors. So it's entirely your choice. But in general, for general motion, it should actually work. So there you have it. This is the motion capture retargeting process in action. As, as you can see, it's, it's rather easy. What you do first is you go into the mocap mode, you set up and retarget your joints, right? You scale your BVH rig down to the same size as your character rig, you align them, and then you just run the mo motion capture retargeting process, and it gives you a bunch of quad K motors that you can manipulate. You can also, of course, change your position, that's easy. So you can also alter the positional offsets. You can alter splines as well, so you can do your timing, that's great. And of course, don't forget, in the worst case, if you really need to directly manipulate it using old school controls, you can convert to FK, and that will give you an FK control motor. Right? So you have lots of options at your, at your disposal. All right, so that basically concludes this tutorial on motion capture retargeting. I hope you had fun watching this and I hope you have fun using this feature, this very, very powerful feature because essentially what this allows you to do is you can now use Creature 3D, import in existing motion capture BVH animation assets and just reanimate or retarget your characters with any existing motion capture animation. Very, very powerful feature, very efficient feature and I think it will be very useful for your workflow. Thank you so much for watching and happy animating.